There you go. Hello. Hey, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I've been having problems all day. You can hear me? Yeah, we're yeah. good. Cool. Nice to meet you, Brian. Yes, sir. Same here. Good to see y'all. Good to see your light uh, over in Tennessee, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when you coming through? I have no idea. I just want to make it through this show. <laughs> I, I got the same feeling. <laughs> what in the hell's going on today, man? I mean, God. I mean, it's been like three days. Three days. It feels like the three dark days of the world that they used to prophesize. But after the, I don't know how many shows have I done today. Three. So after the first show, I it was more of a sleep. And then after the second show, I laid down. I didn't feel like I had to sleep, but I but I had to lay down. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I wasn't asleep, but I was in Delta state, I guess. And, and I was laying down here in the RV and I could hear Morgan, right? Which it was, it wasn't her because when I went in the house, she was in the bedroom with the door closed and she was asleep. Oh. So when I was trying to get out of the bed, I got out of the bed and I, I could feel my arms on the, uh, the, the wall in the in the uh, the cabinet, I could feel my arms, I could feel myself raise up, I could feel my feet hit the ground, and then I would open my eyes and I was in the bed, and this went on for like ten minutes. Wow! And I was like, I'm up, and I'm looking <laughs> around, and and uh, and then I would open my, you know, it was it was weird, it was very very strange, it was it was like an out of body experience that is strange kind of cool though i guess and i don't know what's happening i, I you know uh, the the uh Le tiffany the lady that was on the last show said yes something heavy is happening right now i don't know have you guys been getting anything yeah, yeah she's a little bit under the weather today i i had to drive to st louis and back this past week and i had just come back when you and i connected on messenger Mm. And I was fine. Ten minutes later, I crashed. Wow. My entire body is hurting. And I i guess it's some sort of integration. I don't know. I'm just going with the flow, loading up on ginger root Yeah, well, I don't she know, man. Shut down. She shut down last night and today. And she's, and I've been, I've been feeling the integration too for um, probably about a week. I, I can feel the higher energy something's happening with me and it's it's not always pleasant um mm -hmm. i you know you can tell when we're getting the uh the energies um so yeah i agree with you something's going on <laughs> no it almost makes me wonder and not that i can give my power over to anything because i won't but it almost makes you wonder if there's something going on you know i mean but you know, there's always some kind of elevation afterwards, but God, this one's heavy. This one's really, really powerful. You know, it really is. I agree. We agree. <laughs> so how did, how did you two meet? Cause I know you were, you, you were in Europe, right? You lived in Europe. Yes. In Holland, the Netherlands. Yeah. And I work for a company who has its headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. And <clears throat> this was in 2017 and I was already working together with Rana Herman, one of Archangel yeah. Michael's uh, messengers. And um, so when I was over here on this side of the pond, I called her up, asked her, you know, is it okay if I just travel on and come visit you a couple of days? And she said, sure, but we were planning on uh, going to the mountain for the Great American Clips. Clips do you want to come? And we're going to meet up with an author there. I was like, sure, I'll, I'm game. And that was... That was him. That was him. So yeah. they they came up from Reno for the uh, to Mount Shasta uh, for the uh, the Great American Eclipse, and that's that's where we that's where we met. So wow, you met at an an, a, an important that was like September twenty seventeen. Yeah, oh, I remember twentieth yeah. and twenty first. Yeah, I remember that. I was in Utah. I remember that. <clears throat> and so I had also been a. I guess uh, a big 
fan of Rana and her work and uh, the messages that she brings through from Mikael. And so that's how, that's how I knew Rana. <clears throat> and so it was just very uh, serendipitous the way it all came together. Yeah, it was set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's pretty so, right. So, um, so did you know right away? Did you just look at each other and know, or, or some people talk about the voice activates them? Uh, how did you guys figure it out? Uh oh, is it me or is it them? Somebody's frozen. Mm. Let's see. My internet is unstable. Oh, okay. You're good. You're good. You're back. So, uh, so how, when did you know? We knew that weekend. We knew something was going on. It it took us a minute. Um, well, we only had 24 hours. Yeah, we only had 24 hours, and so we by the time by the time they were going back to Reno, we we definitely knew something was up, and uh, it was a little bit it was just a little bit awkward. <laughs> there, <laughs> There at the end, uh, <laughs> you know, you're giving each other a hug, and it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I was thinking, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't wouldn't mind to give her a little kiss, but there's Rana. We just put Rana in the back seat of the car, and I thought, well, you know, if that's uninvited and she smacks the crap out of me, that's not going to go <laughs> over very well. So uh, maybe I ought to just hold off on that. So we kind of had, we both had that feeling, and and we started you know texting and talking right away and what's i don't know five, five or six weeks later she came back from san francisco and and we spent some time together and just kind of just kept going from there so so easy. did you did, did you guys discuss it in that first 24 hours did you discuss anything not in the first 24 hours because he was having his doubts because i was in holland oh so we had some uh, good friends <laughs> That's all the better. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, well, you know, because I had been, um, you know, I'd been asking for uh, a companion, um, soulmate, somebody who was, you know, compatible and particularly, uh, you know, on the on the energetic and spiritual levels and this sort of thing. And so and so I had just kind of my first reaction was just to kind of write it off. It's like, oh, she lives in Europe. She's got, you know, she's got a, a career over there. And, you know, how would that ever work sort of thing? And then uh, and then some of my soul sisters um, were kind of like making fun of me, pounding me on the head a little bit like, um, hey, <laughs> dumb, dumb. <laughs> yeah. Just because she lives in Holland today doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So <laughs> You're on the same uh, planet, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, I was like, yeah, you know, you're probably right. And so we went through the immigration process and that was a little, a little tiresome and tedious, but we did it the right way. And it took what, a year and a half, start to finish, I guess, in that neighborhood. We started the process in December of that year, of 2017. And I got here September 2018, because we got married on Michael's name day. So you, yeah, you, you went through yeah, because I've looked into it. We've actually applied once. We've got to go back into it. But uh, it's they say it's better to get married and then do it and be in the country. Um, so, yeah, I know that actually isn't very long how long it took you then. But you you submitted the papers three months after you met, two and a half months after you met. We got uh, engaged six weeks after we met. Yeah. See, yeah. I was asking Morgan to marry me from like, six days I, I, and I had to ask her for almost two two and a half years I probably asked her a thousand times I got tired of asking and then one day she walked in we were in Georgia she walked in the kitchen, <laughs> she walked in the kitchen and said we're getting married so, <laughs> there you go so I said, okay. <clears throat> have you noticed um have you noticed uh, the the role of the masculine incarnated feminine incarnated uh, as being a part of your evolution? Has it followed the collective energies? I mean, is it, is it, am I off base? Is it uh, different than that for y'all? No, I would say you're spot on. I mean, I think we just, 
just naturally by by our natures are very very compatible because um, she she is really a, one of the sweetest and kindest and most compassionate souls on this planet and uh, she she is a, a a great representation of the divine feminine um, I'm biased obviously but I, I do believe that is the case and yeah. and um, and I am very much aligned more with the um, the the masculine uh, Mikael uh, kind of angelic kind of kind of energies and so I think we blend together very nicely yeah yeah it's uh, it's interesting too you know like to be in a relationship with a very highly intelligent female after after going through you know like everybody we went through different relationships and and really brings in a, in a because it's like you described, it's so wholesome and nourishing and unconditionally loving. And, and it's not something, I don't know about you, but it's not something I ran into ever. No. <laughs> maybe my great grandmother, you know, maybe my great grandmother when I was four or five years old, I think she was the first human angel I ever met, but, but that was all energetic because she spoke Spanish. She couldn't even speak English and, you know, but yeah, that's, that, that, that is uh, something I think that you're starting to see more of that, that energy starting to come out. Um, you know, people talk about it being in the background because they were suppressed for so long and, you know, oppressed and all the things that went with it. Now you, you mentioned Archangel Michael. Now is your book related to that? It's he started it. He started young. Well, he's the one that introduced me to, um, to the Lemurians, the in the fifth dimensional city of Telos, in inside the inner earth under Shasta, um, and they are a, a beautiful uh, civilization. Of and you know we can think for people who aren't familiar with the Lemurians, the high priest Adama describes them as um, close cousins to the Pleiadians. Um, and so they look very much like us. Um, they've been here for a very, very long time. Some of the original uh, cedars of this, of this planet. And many of us have been here just as long. I mean, many of us have lineages that really do go by, back that far. And so, um, you know, for many of us, they really are uh one one version of our of our family um, so you you mean like <clears throat> you mean like lineages of of uh successive human incarnations mm -hmm. on an individual basis yeah yes and, and i don't want to get caught up on that too much we can always do a show together <clears throat> that would be fantastic um but i just have to ask one more question before we get back to the to the topic today um now the telos civilization or city are they connected to the Agarthians that are purportedly in uh, underneath the Antarctic? I I do not know. I could not answer that that question. Um, and so I, I don't want to speak out of school, but I would, from my understanding, there's an there's an awful lot going on inside the realms of the inner earth. It was described yeah. to me as a series of worlds within worlds. Yeah. And I believe that there are probably a number of breakaway civilizations there. Yeah. They're not all benevolent. Um, yeah. And so they definitely, uh, in Telos, have their safeguards, if you will. And so they do have other inner earth communities, um, which they, uh, you know, are friends with, communicate with. Um, you know, one that we often hear of is uh, Shambhala. Uh, yeah, that would be the Agartha. Yeah. And so that's where the term Agartha comes from. And so, but I also believe that there, uh, there's some other stuff going on yeah. there. And I'm not so sure. The Antarctica piece, um, uh, I'm not so sure about, but I'm interested to see what comes of all that. Well, so anything they put out in the press, you've got it. You've got, even if they leak it through the alt news, you've got a question. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, that's what's got us to this point in the awakening anyway, is questioning everything. That's right. why I have a lot of questions for you today. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, to answer your question, Mikhail was the first <laughs> one that that ever came to me, if you will, as far as being able to yeah. have a have a communication with a being in the higher realms of light. He was he was the first one and he's the one that introduced me to uh, to Adama and Telos. And that's how I got into all that. Yeah, he was he was, I believe, the first one that came to me as well. I didn't know who it was. And then he's actually the one that gave me the name Sology and the definition of it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, now, do you, do the two of you uh, connect together? Do you have, uh, you know, do you have uh, meditations together or, or astral together? Do you have dimensional experiences? Uh, Every day. Know? Every day. Every day. Yeah. That's same here. Yeah. Uh, so it's a common practice every day to connect. It, connect. it is. At least I'll find the flame prayer in the morning. Yeah, we'll do a series of prayers in the morning. And then just about every evening, we'll settle in for a meditation, which could be it. Some days it might be some nice music and a stillness meditation. It might be, um, traveling in our light bodies uh, to telos or traveling to our uh, fifth dimensional uh, pyramid to see uh, Big Mike and the gang. There's a number of things that we might do, but but we do something nearly every day. Yeah. And have you had any type of uh, apparitions or anything that beyond third eye come into the room or into your space when you're together? We not, uh, I wouldn't say not that we can sense with our third eye necessarily, but we definitely sense it with our heart. We, we call it getting dosed. So yeah. a lot of times we may be talking, um, talking to somebody. I mean, Mother Mary is a perfect example where we'll be either, um, uh, we'll be in, in prayer or we'll just be talking to her. And then all of a sudden, this wave of loving energy comes over you and the tears start flowing. And we literally keep a box of Kleenex right by the couch that we meditate on because they will come in and, and dose us. And we can, we can always tell by the energy who it is that's coming in. Um, so not so much like an apparition of a being in the room, but definitely just that that overflowing, uh, all encompassing feeling of just pure, unconditional love. And when that comes in, um, you know, the the tears, the tears flow. For us. Right. <laughs> and right. Ryan sees a lot more. Um, with his third eye than I do, I just get flashcards, if you will, like visual impressions that are really fast. Yeah. So I kind of have to guess. And what about the, uh, so uh, a lot of the couples, and it seems to most all the couples, the, fe the feminine seems to be the transmitter, picking up the information, uh, you know, verbalizing it for the most part. I mean, uh, is that how it works with y'all? That's more you, right? It's more. It's more Brian. It's yeah. It's more. It's more me. She's. Um, she's. All, I mean, she's very intuitive as well. I'm more of the transmitter, I would mm -hmm. say. But um, but she sees a lot and knows a lot that that I don't get. So it's definitely a, a team effort, you say. And speaking of a team effort most all the couples that I've spoken to they have obviously have their own path but there's that trinity aspect that third energy aspect and they seem to have uh, at some point a joint mission uh, do you guys fit that category we do yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we do. do we were asked to leave together <laughs> you're asked to leave together uh, so when I met Brian and we got married in Shasta, 
and um, we were married by Rana Herman Hussein. And in the evening, she and Randy came to our house, and she said Michael wanted to come through. And um, <laughs> and <clears throat> what See? he said was that especially him, because I was more um, in the higher realms. He's had many, many lives here on uh, Earth. I mean, not as much, not as many. Um, but he had come and gone to Telos and um, going again to um, bring the energies of Telos out into the world on the on the surface. Um, and the question on the on the evening of a wedding was if Michael's words were, if I would ask you one more time, would you do it? If I were to ask you to leave the mountain one more time, would you do it? And um, yeah, that was. It was uh, bittersweet for sure because we definitely love the high vibrational energies of Mount Shasta and all the beautiful beings on the surface and in the uh, in the ethers in and around Mount Shasta. And so, um, you know, he was saying it's time to time to time to come down off of the mountain, come down out of the monastery, and go back out. To the people again can you can you do it one more time oh i see what you mean so yes. so you so you ended up in tennessee yeah <laughs> michael talks about memory seat atoms that each one of us embodies and they when you go places you activate yeah. those places other people but you also get something in return yeah and i guess we are what they said was each of us separate is powerful but once we come together that power is magnified um, many many times and we do grid work everywhere we go and so we've done quite a bit of grid work while we've been here in tennessee so yeah and, uh, and then on the way over from california um did some cool stuff in hot springs arkansas with some of the the big crystals there and uh so and you know, we don't we don't really know what's next. We're just like everybody else. We're just taking it one day at a time and trying to put one foot in front of the other and you know do the best we can. Yeah, I was talking to Judith Kuzel about that this morning. You know, because like we've been uh, uh, through twenty one states, um, and and it's not even conscious most of the time. There's been times that we've stopped and done something. You know. Uh, but a lot of the times we're just we're just driving and you can feel it you know the cell phones will go off and you can just feel it and and then you know 20 minutes later 30 minutes later you're looking at each other going we just did grid work you know mm -hmm. i mean so there's something to be said about what you said earlier when you go places it's almost like you're flipping switches you know as you go by absolutely and, absolutely um, yeah and then um and then it starts to come back to you, although the, the coming back part or the, the reciprocal part seems for at least through our experience seems to take a little longer. You know, it's not like instant, but I guess that's how everything is. We get a download mm -hmm. and the integration process and the manifestation process might take a little bit longer. A lot of people can attest to the transition we call ascension, uh, like days like today, being uh, somewhat challenging. You know, back in the day before we partnered up and even after, we've all had these moments of, I want to get the hell out of here. Um, do you, ha has, have you had that happen? Has it, have you had the challenges since you've been together? Uh, if so, has it been any easier with somebody? Uh, do you have any techniques or processes that you use when you, when the relationship is unbalanced, which would mean one or the other or both or whatever? Well, I mean, I'll just, you know, I mean, speaking for myself, I, and this is not anything new, um, I've gone through periods where I have had deep, deep longings for home. And I think all, a, a lot of us, when we start to be able to connect with, I'll just call it, you know, our, our heaven family, um, and when when, this, when you start to make those strong connections and you get a glimpse of the love vibration that exists there, um, 
or, or for example, the way that life is in Telos or some of the other higher civilizations. Um, and when you feel that, when, you, when you're able to open your heart and truly feel that, and then you come out of your meditation and here you are again. Um, for me, I, I've definitely had times of struggle where I just longed for home. I was ready to, you know, uh, I've told my higher self a number of times, um, look, dude, you need to just check off your little boxes and let's get on out of here because I'm over it. And, um, and so, you know, I will say she doesn't seem to exhibit those symptoms as strongly as I do. And I'll say for myself, um, it's a huge, huge blessing to have Fabian here with me and, and to be a part of my life because I, uh, I would, um, I don't know what I'd do without her, Todd. Yeah, I know the feeling, believe me. I know the feeling. And it's not attachment, it's just this thing, right? Yeah. It's just this thing. It's like what I was saying earlier at the start of the show. Like, I, my spirit knew she was 20, 30 feet away. And it, there was such a strong pull. I'm out of my body, you know, looking at my body on the bed. I mean, this is like crazy. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was crazy. You know, I'm still trying to get over it right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, now, now individuals, there seems to be in, in a <clears throat> relationship, Many of the things that we contend with are the same thing the individuals contend with. And even as individuals, we contend with them. You know, a lot of people talk about make sure you stay grounded, drink a lot of water, movement, diet, breathing. But yet we can still have periods of like the last day or two or, you know, we can point to four or five times each month at least where you're, we're getting hammered. Uh, Right. Do you do you handle these things individually? Do you handle them as a couple? Is it all of the above? Both. Both. Yeah. He will. will, will <coughs> excuse me. Um. There are times when, um, so when it's quote unquote minor, you can just go within and uh, try to do some healing for yourself. But if it's uh, too much for yourself to handle then you have your partner who can assist you and he's he's done a lot for me um healing wise mm -hmm. and vice versa so, mm -hmm. so i mean we'll do you know um i think the biggest thing for me is just to is just to really have that that support and like i said i'm just very fortunate to have ended up tr truly with uh you know, one of the sweetest angels on the earth plane. I don't know. I got so lucky, Todd, but I did. So, you and me both. You know, um, so I think that's the biggest thing is just knowing that you have that strong okay. support there, but also, um, you know, we'll do energy work uh, for each other and, um, you know, uh, Reiki and, and some of those kind of modalities and 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 help each other through it um and then working together uh using the violet flame what whatever it is that seems appropriate at the time yeah yeah, yeah. how about the telepathy mechanism has it increased since y'all been together between each other i don't know or it's, i know your mood i mean yeah that's kind of yeah the same. Yeah, I don't know about, I wouldn't say necessarily that we've experienced telepathy, but we're definitely seem to be pretty tuned into each other. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of talk about uh, sacred sexuality um, in these relationships and how the intimacy is a whole different world. Um, and, you know, everything from, from just being in each other's presence, holding hands, uh, dimensional experiences, uh, intimacy that looks more like the old intimacy, uh, full of surprises, full of, uh, uh, I don't know, almost like stargates or gateways or portals opening up and things like that. Have you guys experienced anything like that? No, but we're welcome to the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what Morgan teaches. <laughs> so you can talk to her about yeah, it. No, that, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's, yeah. let's open up a portal and see where we can go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you know, in talking to uh, this lady, Tiffany Kiefer earlier today, she knows quite a bit about uh, Sacred Union. She's downloaded quite a bit about it. And uh, one of the things that she said, uh, which we could relate to, um, was that whether they're conscious or not, these two individuals actually meet in the ethers and have intimacy, Herios Gamos merging, uh, before they meet in the physical, do you have any recollection of, of your higher selves coming together uh, before you came together or maybe uh, getting flashbacks of it later? I wouldn't say it's in my conscious recollection, but as you're sitting there speaking that I'm like, I'm, I'm getting, yeah, that's right. And so, and the way it presents for us is that it was, it's always been just completely comfortable and completely natural. You know, yeah. there's no, no stumbling, fumbling around. It's yeah. just, it feels like, Hey, where, you know, where you been? Uh, yeah. been you know, been waiting on you. Exactly. Glad you finally showed did, up. Did, did you, did you, <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> Somebody's coming in here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Something's going on over here. Uh, and, and did you find that there's like an organic, natural, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, healing or, um, you know, refining of the alignment in your individual body just by being around your partner? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. She's definitely, I think we're helping each other um, to be more balanced you know within the you know here we are in this duality and you've got you know all of the swirling energies you know the um the light the shadow you've got the masculine the feminine you've got the divine masculine divine feminine all that stuff and um so for me she's definitely kind of um helping me to open up some more of those divine feminine codes within mm -hmm. me. And I think I would say that I'm maybe assisting her in um, some more of the, uh, the, the masculine mm -hmm. standing in the power, um, some of those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I do think that what you're talking about being activators for one another has yeah. absolutely been the case for us. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of talk about, and I think the twin flame thing, obviously, I think everybody can agree now it's, it's been distorted, you know, because it's, it's been romanticized and all that stuff. But, but it, it, in these partnerships, um, I mean, because, because everybody has this concept that it's all fluffy love and light, you know, but the mirror, <clears throat> the mirror points out everything, doesn't it? You know what I mean? I mean, it's, you, you see, you know, I can look at Morgan in, in this, in, in different attributes of her, like her intelligence. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, like I can't even touch that. But it, but then I realize there's other parts of me that are, you know, it's all balanced out. Uh, but the people, it, you know, it's work, right? These relationships are work. It takes it takes a conscious effort, even though it is familiar and, and you know the person, but it's still that human aspect still has to do a little work. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we've been, we've really been <laughs> blessed. I, and I think we get, I mean, we just, we, we, we get along just like best friends. And I think one of the things is, um, you can answer too, but for you, but for me, I think one of the things that really helps us is that um, we really do kind of hold a broader perspective of, hey, you know, we've, We've done this many times. Yeah. We came into these embodiments to help our family flip a planet. That's what we're doing here. Um, it's yes, it's a, it is about us because we're the ones having the ex experience and waking up and going through the day. But it's so much bigger than us, and it's so much more important than us. And so I really 
feel like we are focused on our personal ascension, mm -hmm. but also on the collective Gaia, all kingdoms, all humanity. And so we, we know what we're doing here. We know why we came here. And I think just for me to hold that awareness is more than half the battle in these yeah. cases. Also, I think that we didn't, we weren't guided to meet each other until we both had um, reached a certain level um, right. of maturity, spiritual sure. maturity, because otherwise it probably wouldn't have yeah. right. happened. <clears throat> so there were like little things that we had to get used to uh, from each other. But other than that, it has been really yeah. an effortless relationship. And that and, was totally new for me. Yeah, and that's a good point, too. And then some, some, of course, uh, for all of us, at some point in time, like I did a lot of mine 2011, 12, 13, 14, and that was detaching, detaching from family and from tradition and jobs and all that stuff. And I know for Morgan, it was, it, it's been more difficult because she's come over like you, Fabi, you know, she's come over and she's got friends, kids, family and the whole nine yards. And of course, you know, a different country, a different culture altogether. They had you, and you came from uh, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you, or have you, the both of you, have you had to detach from those types of things while you're together or was that? done as well as having reached a certain maturity when you came together in the first place? For me, it happened uh, prior to meeting Brian. Um, mm -hmm. There were certain things that, um, certain people that would have kept me in Holland and that was taken care of. Um, um, my dad passed away. Well, that sounds weird to say that my dad passed away because I would have, see my dad lived in Germany and mm -hmm. had he lived still and his health was uh, deteriorate, deteriorating, I would have stayed for him because he doesn't have anybody, ha had anybody there. Whereas my mom, my sister and my brother um, were there. So my dad um, passed prior to me meeting Brian. So that part was kind of arranged. The path, he, the path he, was clear. Yeah, the yeah. path was clear. And there was another uh, family member that uh, cut ties, which made it easier for me to just say goodbye to my life in Holland. And of course I miss my siblings and my mother. Yeah. Um, but it, it hasn't really been difficult for me to adjust to the States. Also because I started living in, in Mount Shasta. I mean, that is like heaven on earth so yeah. and you had been over here numerous times before yeah that. i came to the states a lot because i had a lot of friends in the states uh job wise i would be here often so yeah for us and same thing for me todd i mean i did i spent probably six years just as a hermit uh, basically just doing doing my stuff you know and uh, if i hadn't done that if i hadn't done that work i wouldn't have been prepared for this relationship. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mine's about the same too, about five or six years. And then she came about a year later. And uh, yeah, there, and in fact, she wanted to come, we met in 2015 and she wanted to come like three months later, come for the Christmas holidays. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. I was pretty shadowed, you know, as we all were. And, uh, and I, at least I had enough uh, wherewithal to know that that wasn't gonna happen at the time. Um, I wasn't ready, but you're right about that. I mean, uh, and you're also right about the fact that uh, uh, things get taken care of. Uh, yeah. You can see that not just in these couples' lives, but other people's lives. You can see how things are arranged or, you know, call it the, the unseen hand of providence or whatever you want to call it, but things right. get moved out of the way and things support the situation. Morgan said uh, for a long, long time, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll see a couple of people and they'll be kind of like doing that and, and, you know, uh, how these relationships, uh, because a lot of people publicize them a little too early sometimes or whatever, but she'll say if the universe, if they're meant to be together, they will be period. It's mm -hmm. not going to be denied. And I think there's, there's a lot of truth to that.
And so, uh, so what can you tell us a little bit about what your joint mission is together? Um, is it beyond just bringing uh, anchoring this divine love frequency to the earth? Um, I guess what Brian does for me, he supports me in parts of my mission um, because my site isn't de as developed uh, yet as his. Um, and he helps me communicate with beings that um, I have a mission with. Um, for instance, I have a strong connection to the elemental realms. Mm -hmm. And um, we would go to Telos in our light bodies and have conversations with them. And it's really nice to see how that happens where Brian is, we're in meditation, Brian is telling what he sees, but sometimes I will see something like a flashcard just before he says it. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice um, a validation of that. It is starting to open up, but um, there's a lot of information that he will get <clears throat> from my elemental friends that is more difficult for me to inter in interpret from just that short image that I get. Yeah. Yeah, and so as far as missions, you know, I joke with them, Todd, and tell them, you know, I know somebody who's available for uh, for various odd jobs and such. I don't, don't require a lot. So, hey, I know somebody who's here for odd jobs, but um, I mean, we don't, again, we're going to, we have some ideas. We'll wait and see as it comes yeah. day by day, but um, our feelings are and what we've kind of been guided to is that um, we feel that as we move forward collectively, that one of the positive outcomes will be the remembrance and the coming together again of the families of the angelics, humanity, and the elemental kingdom. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, at one time in our uh, when we've had our golden ages and um, things where we were all working in a seamless manner for the benefit of all. And uh, I do think that that is part of this ascension process is that we are coming back into, you know, the veil of illusion is thinning. Um, our awareness is opening up. Millions of people are coming online every day. True. And she has strong connections to the elemental kingdoms we both have strong connections to the dragon kingdoms and the angelic kingdoms and um, obviously we both have ties to uh to the uh civilization of uh of telos mm -hmm. and so um i think those are some of the kinds of things that will continue to be in play for us yeah. in the days ahead we're just not sure you know how that six how that will manifest at this point well there's no doubt that and, and you know an emission doesn't have to be like a you know a public kind of thing i mean it's i, I guess at the root of it <coughs> anchor these codes of divine union that frequency that it carries onto this earth back onto this earth that yes. that's that's the mission within the missions right there yes you know? mm -hmm. yeah yes. and, and, and we and, see that yeah we see that a lot i see it in in uh, messages there are a lot of a lot of uh, people who are bringing forth similar messages and just in our own work you know what we're doing every day is just being mindful to um, do our best to be uh, pure conduits and just allow that source frequency to flow through us and down to the crystalline core of Gaia mm -hmm. and um, and just to be here and to anchor, anchor the light, anchor the love, anchor the codes, and to send out love and blessings for all kingdoms and humanity. And what I would say, you know, if we talk about divine missions and purpose and whatnot, um, I forget his exact words, but I mean, Mikhail uh, teaches something along those lines. That is, if, if this is all that you do, just, yeah. it's if you just anchor the light and exactly. and express love to your fellow beings that that's enough that's yeah enough. yeah yeah we were told 
be together, love each other, and broadcast. Yeah. Uh, anything anything else is gravy, you know. This yeah. is it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now you talked about the dragons. We've 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 been pretty public about pretty much everything we've gone through. Um, and and so most of last year there was a lot of dragon activity, visitation, whatever you want to call it, and 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 into this year. Uh, and, and even in general, there seemed to be an uptick in dragon energy encounters uh, in, you know, sitting in this chair and just observing the community. H have you seen that uptick? Is there a reason that they're coming around more these last few weeks and months? We, we've, been, uh, we've been aware of them for, I, well, I was made aware of them and... Um, Prior to my time of moving to Mount Shasta again through Mikael, most of my most of the beings that I've met um, <coughs> and most of my kind of my big cosmic events have all been guided directly by Mikael. And part of the reason for that is because that's the, you know, that's the the protections, um, uh, the due diligence, if you will that I said, I've never been a big fan. I'm not interested in just running around in the astral plane and seeing who I bump into. That's not what I want to do. And so I've been fortunate to have been, uh, to been shown things and introduced. And so Mikael was the one that introduced me to uh, a dragon being, and this is a collective of blue dragons. And since then we've had, we've had many interactions with them, but what we were told is um, just as we have many, many, many cosmic beings now who are here uh, focused on earth and humanity and helping us to ascend now, uh, we're told that there are beings from all corners of the cosmos who are here assisting us. And so the ascended dragon tribes um, the way we understand it is there are dragon beings who are not yet ascended, and there are those, just like humanity in our form, um, who have ascended as well. And so, obviously, we're working with the ascended dragon collectives. That's important to note. And um, that they have come. They're very closely tied. Uh, matter of fact, um, about a year ago, uh, Rana Zane brought through some very interesting information and what she brought through was that Archangel Mikael is the uh, commander of the dragon brigades and that the dragon realms at least in our sector of the cosmos that they work under under his guidance and tutelage or direction however you want to say that and so there's a very close tie between the angelic realms and the ascended dragon realms and uh, and that they are they're very closely connected with Gaia and the natural kingdoms and the elemental kingdoms and that that's the work that they're doing is really cleaning out some of the energies of the uh, the inner earth and the bowels of Gaia and some of these um, uh, perhaps some of these distorted matrices that have uh, uh, distorted grids and distorted matrices that were placed here around Gaia. And so um, <coughs> my understanding is that that's what they are doing is helping to remove some of the old stuff that needs to go, helping to restore, uh, to rebuild and to restore the new earth crystalline grid structures and all of that that will support Gaia and all of us in our ascension. So those are little pieces that we've got. How about, uh, Bobby, how about you? How about, uh, elementals, you're connected to the elementals. Mm -hmm. um, any any, uh, any uh, recent intel from the elemental? Because there seems to be a bleed through happening, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure until I can tell you about my uh, experience here. So uh, most houses, most buildings will have elementals living in them, um, but humanity is not yet aware enough um, of them. And we've had we've had how to call it an intern 
for a cup for like nine months, um, which was a little elemental being. And um, we were very connected to each other. And again, I get, he would show me like little flashcards in a way that he knew what, uh, that he knew that I would get what he was saying. So uh, for instance, we would be on the couch ready to go to Telos to meet up with Trinil Tokton. That's the blue dragon that um, Brian was just talking about. Um, and then I would get like a little flashcard of him running into the room with his backpack on dressed in a little dragon suit. So that would tell me that he was going to travel with us. Um, but the intention of him being here with us uh, for about nine months was kind of like an internship um, because he in the elemental kingdom has a certain role of being a, what, what would you call that? Like a, a connector between like a and his kingdoms. Yeah, like an ambassador for the elemental kingdoms. Um, so he's coming to, so he was coming to work with us um, to kind of practice up a bit so that he could teach and help other. Um, the, he's kind of like a little gnome, kind of like a little small person, little person, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want to call brownies, they come under different names, but that's kind of what he was, a very, very jovial, happy-go-lucky kind of energy. And, um, and so they're within their kingdoms, um, just like we have here, you know, we have people uh, who are taking uh, leadership positions um, or way shower positions, whatever you want to, we don't need to use titles, but just like what you're doing, going out and working and you and Morgan are talking to people and you're doing, you know, all this cool stuff. I would call that, uh, I would call that a leadership position or a way shower position. And so they have the same within their realms. And, um, and so they have beings who are, who are and will be working more closely with those of us who are receptive to it, to, to open those connections and make those connections again. Yeah, because yeah, it's important that uh, humanity starts to remember again how the, um, the three kingdoms are supposed to work together, the angelics, the elementals, and humanity. Uh, the elementals were here to support us in anything that we wanted to manifest. Only humanity has dropped so much in the past in frequency that, you know, they've been suffering too. Yes. And um, we can help them by one, acknowledging their existence, um, sending them love, uh, working with the violet flame to transmute all the all the dark things that we've been creating for the past eons of time uh, so that their workload gets lightened too. Yeah, it's really a shame that Adama uh, told me, he said, you know, if the elemental kingdoms were to go on strike, life as you know it on earth would cease in about seven days. Yeah. Your your plants, your tomatoes, your bananas, your flowers, your all life. All life. Nature yeah. beans, the nature beans and elementals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about? So, uh, it seems like you you have a very organic connection, and and I say that you know from the highest respect. Uh, inner Earth, elementals, angelic, which I guess is everywhere. What about galactic? Do you have any connection with the galactic? And not that there's anything right or wrong about it. I'm just curious. Um, we we do. Um, I'm I'm aware of four four or five of my uh, higher aspects, and uh, one one of them is a is a, a tall blue uh, Syrian, um, which is uh, He's he's in uh, pretty sure uh, a six dimensional vibration, and I've been able to visit with him a number of occasions. Um, he has served on some of the galactic councils in the past. He's not in that role any longer. I have been able to sit with him, but it um, takes 
it takes a bit of doing uh, for me to be able to sit in his energy. Most of the most of the time when I when I try to sit with him, I end up just kind of zonking out. <laughs> oh wait, hey, hey, I'm I got you. I'm here. <laughs> just I'm just zonked out when I sit with him. So. Um, but yeah, and then obviously we have aspects in Telos, and uh, so we're we're aware of some of our higher aspects. And and there's there's been more uh, coming to the surface with the elders, uh, the Sasquatch uh, elders, uh, and I guess they're elementals as well, though interdimensional elementals. Uh, some people uh, talk about them having craft and such, but do you ever have any uh, interactions with the, the elders, the Sasquatch? We have not. I know there are many on the, on Mount Shasta uh, who have spoken of such encounters, and uh, that's not anything that either one of us have. have well, everybody's got different pieces, I guess, you know. Yeah. So so you were you were actually living in Mount Shasta? Uh, and then you guys went to Mount Shasta and got married, and then you got the intel, it's time to come off the mountain. How did you end up in Tennessee? Well, I was, I was living here before I went to Mount Shasta, and so I have family here, and, uh, and we moved here in, intentionally. We've always been drawn to this to this area you know we're just um, not even a half hour from the Smoky Mountain National Park and it's a very very beautiful place Absolutely. Um, very just you know and we love being with with nature obviously and so uh, it works out great for us just to be able to jump in the car and 30 minutes we're up in the mountains with a you know sitting beside a, a mountain stream with the rhododendron and the, the moss and the mm. You know, so it, it's uh, this is not a, it's not a bad place to be. And uh, so do you have any I know it's hard to make plans now, you know, that everyone's talking about how you can't make any plans. It just never it never gets supported. But uh, do you have anything on your radar for 2020? Are you guys you know, a lot of people are moving around? Uh, some people are not moving around. But, uh, you know, there's gatherings occurring, conferences and such. Do you guys have anything on your agenda for 2020? Um, we, we are planning to have um, an, uh, an uh, initiatic journey on Mount Shasta. I think it's the third week of August. And this is being hosted by, it's being hosted by Telos USA and Mount Shasta Light Publishing. And uh, so a uh, nice lady there named Victoria Lee, who has taken over the copyright work of uh, a lady named Aurelia Louise Jones, who published uh, the books Telos 1, 2, and 3. She also published a very beautiful book called The Seven Sacred Flames, one of our very favorite, favorite books. Um, and so anyway, Aurelia, left us uh, in 2009 and so uh, her caretaker if you will and their organization have have organized um, a really great five-day retreat uh, so we're going to go up on the mountain every day and kind of follow the path of the initiate it ends with an ascension ceremony and we're going to be um, doing just a combination of seeing some of the, the, the highlight spots around Mount Shasta, but also with meditation, um, probably uh, channeled messages every day and lots of time on the mountain for quiet time, reflection, that sort of thing. So that's, that's something that we're looking forward to. But other than that, you know, we don't- See what comes. So yeah, yeah. What comes. yeah. there seems to be a pull that direction, late summer, summer and late summer. I was I had Judith Cassell uh, Kuzel on earlier today. She's going to be in Shasta around then. Uh, I know got some friends, Sedona, Shasta, that whole quadrant. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like it's there's a, a Colorado, uh, Utah, Nevada. It seems like there's a pool coming. You know, maybe there's going to be a big gathering. Who knows? That'd be great, wouldn't it? No, wouldn't it? So uh yeah before we head out i mean 
through your connection, through your relationship, through your connection to uh, the faces of the universe that you are connected with and that you converse with, do you have any late intel? Like, you know, what the hell's going on right now? Uh, what's coming? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if people even want to talk about what's coming because so many people predicted things that didn't come. But, but I, do you have a feel for what's going on? Do you ever get any kind of collective intel when you're uh, connecting? Yeah, I'll. Go ahead. The last vestiges being pulled down. Yeah, I mean, we definitely feel like the we definitely feel like these last uh, vestiges of the old grid are being cleaned out now, and we we definitely feel like it's it's open opportunity now for us to to all be connecting with our higher selves and our beloved I am presence and. Really, Todd, what we have been encouraged more and more is to um, to know that we have the full support of our uh, family and sponsors mm -hmm. on the other side. But we're also being encouraged more and more to to go into the heart space and and ask those questions here, find those answers here, find that discernment here, and that's not. It's not always an easy thing to do, as you know, but that's the way we're kind of feel like we're um, like uh, in some way, um, like baby birds being pushed out of the nest. Of the a nest. Bit. Yeah. I totally, totally resonate, align, and understand that. Um, there's no more questions. You know, I mean, it's like, you, you know, I mentioned to Morgan three, four weeks ago as we were having we're always doing the same thing you're doing so this particular maybe it was a week long period we had three or four substantial elevations and i said to her i said you know wow like we're gonna really start seeing things in the room now not just transluent translucent beings and dragons we're gonna see like physical matter and she said no i don't think so and i'm like what she said i we're that it's we're that now. And that's what I was going to ask you earlier. And I'm so glad that you brought this up. Um, because a lot of, you know, a lot of our journeys have been the same where we were connecting with something that seemed external and then it embodies within us. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you lay down now, like, who am I talking to? You know, but the, this whole thing about there's no, there, there's no more questions, not because, well, it is like you said, and I've, I've said that many times, it's like being kicked out of the nest. All the answers are here now. All of that's inside of us. So er, the Akashic is inside of us. Everything is there. So I, I totally get what you're saying. And I think that is a new spin on what's happening now, because how else could we become self-reliant, self-responsible exactly. and conscious co-creators, you know, that can maximize the potential. It is, it is a self-contained kind of thing. So that makes a lot of sense. And I've seen the effect it's had as you watch it. Uh, some people, for instance, that have been say uh, out there for a long time, very publicly as a leader and start to become more embodied, I guess, you know, less, less external access less identification with the external access, more identification with the I am presence within themselves. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because uh, I don't want to sound like the only one saying it. No, <laughs> but it's a, it's a shift, right? I mean, the other thing that they, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll share this with you. This happened not, not long ago, just a few weeks ago where we were visiting Telos and, um, and I was able to, kind of tap into the collective of every all of the inhabitants of the of the city and and I it was very strange because it's usually just the I'm connecting with this one being and hey Todd I see you there how you doing Todd we're connecting in our heart space love you brother how's it going today you know and we're doing this thing and and now all of a sudden it's whoa I'm here's this whole collective and then it was like, you, okay, and it was described to me that you're ac accessing a new, uh, a new radio station, mm -hmm. right? It's just like changing the dial on the radio. You've just changed over the dial a little bit, and now you're on the collective channel. 
And with your intention now, change the dial again, come off the collective channel and bring it back to our channel. Just yeah. change the dial with your intention. And then uh, for those beings there in the higher realms, they change the channel again and they are now kind of setting up a, a little privacy net for themselves so that they're not just broadcasting yeah. all of their thoughts, hearts, and feelings out to the, and so it, it all begins with their intention of what are they wanting to do? What radio channel are they wanting to tune into and broadcast from? And, um, and so my point in saying that is when we're talking about, you know, learning to go into the heart and get the answers here, for me, it seems like we're really being taught and learning and remembering how to do things in a different way than we're used to. And I'm finding it's not just, it's not so easy. I mean, we're still working our way through it. I know that there's, you know, we still have a long way to go. It's different. What I'm doing now is different than what it was three years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And not to, and, and, you know, proportionate to where we were on the linear timeline, that was big stuff back then. Right. But I, you know, there's, there's been many times I've had to, it's been a while, but I mean, there's, you know, we all had those because we were crazy, right? I mean, everyone thought we were crazy and, and you would doubt yourself and, and, you know, you can look down the road a little bit and you look back at some of the things that, that came to you and that you experienced and, and you just like, how could I even doubt myself? This stuff is uh, not of this world, you know? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a uh, it's been a interesting journey. I think this year is, it's like all the previous eight or 10 years in one, or even, <laughs> you know, even the last hundred or something, I don't know, but it's, it's moving really fast and it's encouraging mm -hmm. to see couples out there, uh, could, because we're two or more gather, you know, right. and right. even if it's a, uh, you know, a get together, like you're going to have, uh, in Shasta. You know, the, the, uh, it's apparent now and becoming more apparent that when we gather in this new energy, which is not agenda-based, which is not, what's not overly shadowed, where we can come together with the same intention of heart, regardless of what we say or do, everybody, everybody gets, gets, a, gets a, uh, a blast, right? You know, right. get a blast. And, and I think what you said too, about this, this last, uh, an example you gave where you were tuning into one being and then it became a collective being uh, or a collective uh, complex. I remember getting a download a couple of years ago and it was like being shown how things work on most planets. And it was like, in essence, not that they slept, but it like we would go to sleep while we were asleep, there was a planetary consciousness and we would be updated by everybody's Ooh memory banks and experiential banks and then wake up to a to a much broader spectrum of life on a given day and and that's kind of what i got from what you were saying a minute ago uh because i look at the the inner earth stuff and just from my own journey and this was going way back like in, when i first started to wake up and very much came through that it was like a fifth dimensional type of environment Mm -hmm. you know living right next to us um right. and so that's a good sign too because of the geographic proximity you know as well as the vibrational proximity so i think there's going to be more and more of that i yeah. do too i do too so do, do you guys have anything uh that you want to announce anything you want to uh any, anything you've got going on websites anything books anything like that you can direct us to um, if anybody wants more information about the retreat, they can, uh, they can visit lostlemuria.com. Mm -hmm. Very easy to remember, lostlemuria.com. And there's some email addresses and things there for they can get in, in touch and find more information. But Right on. Yep. But we're glad to spend time with you, and we appreciate the opportunity to visit with you today, Todd. Absolutely, and I look forward to uh, future collaborations. And, uh, and, and a physical meeting at some point. That would be cool. Say hi to Morgan for us. I yeah, will do so you guys are in Florida now, right? You're gonna, when you come back, if you come back this way, you know, we'd love to show you around the mountains up here. 
Yeah, as long as there's no white stuff on it, we'd be okay. No, no, it's starting to warm up a little bit, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. it'll start leafing out here soon. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, and so uh, I expect to see a lot of pretty little wildflowers popping up uh, here in the spring and summer, and it's really a beautiful place. And so, if you happen to be coming along this way, um, let us we know. Very, we very well could be. I, I, I don't okay. know. I mean, it's going to be. Uh, around uh after the first week of april before we head up and that's where we're at now okay I mean, we, who knows what can happen but I, I would that's kind of the plan right now that seems to be what's on the agenda and i know it's a beautiful area because i've been through there many many times okay um, so yeah absolutely well you thanks for everything that you guys are doing for everybody for all of us thank you you're very welcome and thank you for coming on today and uh honoring us with your presence sharing space with us and sharing your story and and all that. I, I look forward to doing it again sometime if you're open to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Take care. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao.